Battleground Productions presents Brass, the audio series. Episode 13, Upstairs and Downstairs. The year is 1885, but not one that would be familiar to you. For this is a world that differs in many ways from the one in our history books. This luxurious townhouse in the Mayfair district of London bears much the same facade as it did in the world that we know. But the four people sitting chatting over breakfast are possessed of intellects and talents quite unlike any in our own history. Yet for all of what makes them extraordinary, the brasses are just as likely to engage in the sort of idle breakfast chat that any family would recognise. More or less. Yes, of course. Universal suffrage is all very well, but it's merely a tool we must use to fix more significant problems. All very well? The vote for women is not only a necessity for our sex, it is fundamental for the betterment of humanity. But equality between the genders, while imperative, can only be the first step in making radical changes that society demands. Such as? A full redistribution of wealth, accompanied by a systematic dismantling of existing systems of social structure. Ridiculous. Now you're sounding like an anarchist. You cannot dismiss the anarchists. Some of their ideas are not only sensible, they're practical. If you read Bakunin... I have read Bakunin in three different languages, and he makes no sense in any of them. Ooh, there's a sale at Moss Bros. No reading the paper at table, Cyril. I wasn't reading. I was merely glancing, using my powers of observation, Mother. Isn't that what you're always telling us to do? You may read everything, Mother, but that doesn't mean you know everything. I know enough to dislike your tuppenny socialism. And as you are my daughter, I certainly know everything that you're thinking when you're thinking it. That's ridiculous. And it contradicts what Hume says about free Free will will as as a matter of semantics semantics and his landmark landmark treatise on human nature. human nature. I hate you. You have complicated and deeply ambivalent feelings about me. Possible deficiencies of apparel can you be looking to fill, Cyril? You have an entire wardrobe stocked with waistcoats. Most of them are horribly out of fashion, Father. We've been out of London for three years. Really, Mother? How do you imagine that the goals of social and economic justice are to be achieved if it is to be via a capitalist system? Those who are at the bottom are destined to remain so, generation after generation, crushed down by the oppressive economic power of those above. People of character, intellect and ambition have always been able to climb to their appropriate rank. Just look at your father, from charter school boy to titled peer, all due to his unique characteristics and force of will. (laughs) Nonsense! For all the father's accomplishments, his grant of peerage is due principally to your hereditary advantage, Mother. I am sitting here, you know. And if the goal that we esteem is a better world, we can't expect it to come about simply from our fortuitous adventurism. So, I thought I'd just pop out for a bit of shopping then. I was hoping you could help me unpack some crates in my lab. Well, Father, I've only this morning to stop by the sale and I'm supposed to be meeting with Percy and Reggie this afternoon for tea. Couldn't Stevie give you a hand instead? Heaven knows he's three times as strong as me and says he likes the work. But I've received an entire new collection of geodes. I am sure they are positively geodesic, but really, Papa, seeing as they are rocks, they'll be about for me to examine later. That being their geologic nature and all, this sale ends tomorrow. Well... Benjamin, your daughter is talking of socialism again. Nothing wrong in dreaming of a better world, my dear. Dreaming, perhaps. Thinking, please. This conviction that inequality can be solved through radical economic reconfiguration is ridiculous. Inequality is a natural consequence of the mortal condition. On an even track, some horses invariably run faster than others. Mother is being so drearily cynical. A fair point. Madeline, we must never allow experience and learning to trump hope and imagination. Do you believe in the future, Father? I believe we have one. And when I imagine what it might be, I recall the lines of Tennyson. Oh, I know the ones. Let me. <clears throat> Very well. For I dipped into the future, far as human eye could see, saw the vision of the world and all the wonder that would be, saw the heavens filled with commerce, argosies of magic sails, pilots of the purple twilight dropping down with costly bales. Heaved the heavens filled with shouting, and there rained a ghastly dew, from the nation's airy navies grappling in the central blue. Far along the worldwide whisper of the south wind rushing warm, with the standards of the people plunging through the thunderstorm, 
till the war drum throbbed no longer and the battle flags were furled in the Parliament of Man, the Federation of the World. There the common sense of most shall hold a fretful realm in awe, and the kindly earth shall slumber, wrapped in universal law. I dislike Tennyson. Isn't that the same poem that declares woman is the lesser man? It is the narrative persona who declares it, mother. A young man scorned by the woman he intended to marry. A woman who is, if memory serves, his first cousin. Sensible girl. Oh, you have no poetry in your soul! If I have a soul, which is an unresolved question, I would choose to pack it with other things in preference to poetry. Family, I think it's time that we discussed our strategy. What, now? What better time than morning, when your intellects are clear and our day is unscheduled? But I've been... An afternoon trip planned with your chums, we all know, Cyril. Clearly, our earlier attempts at infiltration were unsuccessful. Clearly, but it's simple enough to understand why. It is. Your mother is convinced that our visit to the headquarters of the Metropolitan Police was compromised. The Commissioner is an idiot. So you've said, my dear. Repeatedly. Practically daily. It was only there that our plan was discussed in detail. Unless, perhaps, you suspect any of the domestics. Mm, That I do not. They are hired as much for their discretion as their competence. We have been away for three years. That is true. But in our absence, who has been in charge of the household? Mrs. Mrs. Drake. Drake. Yes, madam. Ha ah, ha. Um, <clears throat> there you are. Drake, your ability to enter and exit a room in total silence is... What you pay me for, is it not, Lord Brass? My sense of decorum? Well, I suppose you are right. Though your sense of decorum is at times unsettling. I will have the breakfast things put away then. Oh, Let me grab a couple of rashers before you clear the sideboard. Very good, Master Cyril. That was a splendid breakfast, Drake. Thank cook for us. I always do, Mum. As the family rises from table, two floors below a bell rings in the servants' common room, where Millicent, the chambermaid, is giving a tour of the servants' chambers to Danny, the new scullery boy. Ah, you see that bell, young Danny? The one that says dining room. I do. That means the family has completed their meal and the parlour staff have been alerted to clear the dishes. Am I to go as well? I think not. You're not to be seen out of the kitchen, the scullery or the staff's quarters. And as to the family, you're only to be seen when Mrs Drake is in attendance. She's the one with all the keys. That's right. And what are they all for? Every door, cupboard or drawer in this house. She's what you call... Our head of security. Security of what? Things and people. She keeps things from slipping out and people from slipping in. I understand being wary of thieves, but who'd want to slip into this place? You'd be surprised. As famous as the Brass family is, there's never an end of people curious about them. Even during their absence, we've had tradesmen knocking on the back door at all hours, asking if the household might be curious to try their services or goods. What do we do if someone should approach us? Send them to Mrs Drake. She's a fright. I'm sorry. Looks like she could stare down a gorgon. I wouldn't speak like that about her. Oh, she comes through as tough, but I wonder if... Millicent? Uh, Mrs Drake? Danny? Mrs Drake? Did I feel my ears burning? I was just showing Danny how the bells work for the parlour staff, Mum. Fascinating it is. It's good to see some natural curiosity from you, Danny. I expect my staff to work well with each other, and I'm glad that Millicent has been instructing you in the work processes of your fellow servants. Now, to the sink, Danny. The breakfast plates will be arriving presently. Yes, am How are you this morning, Mrs Drake? Well enough, Millicent. I noticed some stiffness in my joints as I did my morning physical culture. Age is a relentless enemy. Oh, Mrs Drake, I do not believe it. To the rest of us, perhaps. But I've never seen the slightest sign of you getting old. Older, you mean, Millicent. (laughs) I was of advanced years when I first came to this family as governess to the children. And the time I have spent with the brasses have not exactly been the proper accompaniment to my sunset era. They do live a life of high adventure. And create a lot of messes along the way. Now, Millicent, 
What do you think of our new scullery boy, Danny? Mm, seems all right. Yes? Elucidate, please. Well, he's pleasant and bright enough, but he seems inexperienced with service and a bit cheeky. It came with impeccable references. From the agency? Yes, and the government. The government? Of course. How long have you been employed in this household, Millicent? I was hired just prior to the family leaving on their sabbatical. Over three years, then, my dear girl. You are aware that our family is in no way ordinary. Yes, sir. Their combined renown in the field of invention, detection, academia and the arts, not to mention their unconventionality of their private lives, has made them famous, not only throughout London, but the Empire. Therefore, discretion and an assessment of moral character has always been as important as competence in our hiring of staff. And as you know, I expect my staff to be paragons in their performance. And we are inspired by your dedication, Mrs Drake. Your training as a parlour maid in this household has, in some respects, been unusual. That is true, Mrs Drake. In proper deportment, in etiquette, in cleaning. We run an inordinate number of drills, it seems to me. In the absence of family, it has been necessary to maintain discipline and our level of excellence. I ask much from my staff and they are paid accordingly. The brasses are very generous. So yes, even a scullery boy must come to us with impeccable references from his agency and a clean record as a citizen. If you have any doubts about Danny, please tell me. Even a lad who cleans our dishes must be, as Caesar's wife was declared, above his suspicion. Well, the boy seems all right, maybe a bit cheeky, but he's got a strong arm and he, he puts it into the job of scrubbing pots and pans. I'm glad to hear it. That, I believe, is my cue, Mrs Drake. Hot water to Master Cyril's room for a shave. Very good, Millicent. I'm off to talk with Cook. There's some African ambassador coming on Wednesday, and I want to press her on her notion of what they might enjoy as their cuisine. And with that, the two women leave the common room on to their errands. A moment later, Danny enters and makes his way over to the door leading via stairs to the street above. He pulls from his pocket a key and fits it into the door, edging it open. Danny leans down and uncovers a loose piece of tile near the door jamb. Underneath it is a small piece of paper folded over many times. On the paper is a single word. Prepare. He crumples the note and puts it into his pocket before closing the door again, this time unlocked. What does this innocuous, but given the circumstances, particularly ominous word mean? Does this have anything to do with the threatened actions of the Crime Minister? And what does it portend for the family and domestic staff of the Brass household? Find the answers to these and other questions when we next make a visit to the home of the first family of the realm, Brass. Brass is manufactured by Battleground Productions. For credits and more information on Brass, including our films and live stage shows, go to battlegroundproductions.org and find us on Facebook.